I'm Tom Prince with Western New York Athletics, and you are here for the Western New York Athletics Coaches Corner. Joined by me today is coach from Canisius, Justin Sanicito, coach from Allegheny Limestone, Eric Hemphill, and coach from Medina, John Sherman. Boy, I couldn't be more excited. We got some great teams here to talk about today. But listen, I want to start off by personally asking on how each of you are doing right now during all of this. So, John, let me start out with you. How are things going personally? Oh, you know, we're in lockdown situation just like everybody else. Um, we really haven't been hit too much in Orleans County here by things yet, but we're trying to keep things under wraps as best we can and pushing schoolwork out to the kids during the week and trying to keep ourselves busy here at home. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Justin, how about yourself? Yeah, obviously, again, you know, lockdown here, um, you know, we do uh, videos every day uh, for our kids, um, whether I give them drills or, or things to work on, or they send me uh, things that they're doing um, on a daily basis, just to make sure that we one, stay engaged as a team, you know, and, and two, uh, making sure that they're, they're staying fresh, because when we go, it, it's going to be six practices and, and let's get after it. So, um, you know, personally, Get to spend more time with the family and the girls, which is awesome. So I'm trying to, you know, stay positive with that. That's great. And Eric, how about yourself? Uh, a lot of the same things. Uh, we've been home. I, I, I don't work at the school per se, so uh, we've been working for home for uh, two weeks now. Uh, I'm still seven to four, you know, on my computer, uh, working for the company that I work for, along with uh, trying to push schoolwork to my kids here at the at home with my wife. Um, like Justin said, uh, communicating with the, the group of guys that I have uh, via text and, and different things. Um, just trying to make sure that when this thing does go live, we, we can get right after it. Yeah, no doubt about it. <clears throat> my, my first question is going to go to Justin. Justin, you also run the Academy Stars program here locally, which is a youth baseball organization in Western New York. You've got a good pulse on in the Western New York community what's going on. What are they saying in the Western New York baseball community right now? I think everybody's worried. You know, I mean, whether or not they're saying it, I, I can tell they're feeling it. You know, I mean, we have 100 kids in our organization. And, um, you know, now I've got a group threat, threat with all of them. And, you know, with Cooperstown now just being canceled, um, I think that made things pretty real. You know, it, it hit home, that one. Um, so yeah, I think people are nervous, uh, trying to stay optimistic, but um, you know I'm not a big borrow worry kind of guy, so I kind of you know try to just get everyone to stay calm and whatever happens happens. It's out of our control really. So, um, but I definitely think there's some some worry out there, no doubt. And and for those of you who don't know, Cooperstown is a 12U tournament, one of the biggest tournaments in the in, in you would say in the world. Yeah. Since at one time where they're bringing 110 teams into Cooperstown, New York at one time to play in a week. And they do this for 13 weeks. In a row. I think it's 16 weeks, if I'm correct, in a row. 13, yeah. 13, so I apologize. But uh, uh, it is a huge tournament. So, but to go on, build off that, your 12U team did something special, which I thought was awesome to see. You saw your 12U do, do, do a special birthday celebration. It was pretty cool, yeah. We had a, a 12U kid, Tyler Tevins, and, and, uh, you know, he had a birthday planned and obviously couldn't do anything for it. So uh, I don't know, maybe it was six to 10 families that met and uh, kind of did like a, a birthday drive by and saying, birth, you know, happy birthday to him and had balloons and all that stuff. And, um, you know, that we feel like we have a tight knit uh, program, but I think that's just Western New York. You know, that's Buffalo. That's Western New York. That's that's our kind of people. So but it was yeah. pretty wild. to see. It was it was a great video to see. So, Eric, my question goes to you. We've got some great baseball facilities right now in Western New York, including Niagara Falls, Depew, Lockport, just to name a few right now that are building up. Allegheny Limestone is going to be one of our next ones we're going to see and we're going to hear about. Tell us an update on the field and what's going on down there. Well, uh, it's a great thing that we're putting in a, a multi-purpose field. It's going to host baseball, softball, and uh, soccer in the fall. Uh, we've been waiting on it for a couple of years. We passed a capital budget. Um, we were all ready to go this year before the, uh, the COVID-19 hit. And at the last moment, we also found out that the, uh, 
the field itself was holding water, <clears throat> excuse me. So we had to bring the engineers and the construction group back in and uh, they've been doing some stuff lately. Uh, I just recently got a text message from my AD that um, they've re they're gonna tear up some of it, uh, redo some piping and uh, some of the base layer underneath underneath the turf. And they're supposed to start that uh, tomorrow, I guess. Uh, they came in last week and, and laid out some of the work and, and they're supposed to get through it rather quickly. So in anticipation that we can go back to work here, uh, we may be on it sooner than we thought again. That's fantastic. Well, we can't wait to make sure we cover a game down on that new facility, no doubt about it. So, Coach Chairman, my question is you. You probably have one of the most veteran teams in Western New York and no doubt has a team that will compete for a state championship. What are you doing right now to keep them motivated and get them ready to play if they go ahead and tell us that we can play? Well, we have a we have a veteran team, but we actually are still on the young side. We only have three seniors this year and a bunch of juniors and some sophomores and a freshman. Um, I've had this group of kids since – T-ball, my first T-ball team, I had uh, my son, Nate Sherman, uh, Trevor Luthart, and Chris Goyat were all on that team together as six-year-olds. So we've been working together through that and through house league and through travel ball for the last 11, 12 years now. Um, so these kids, they all know each other. They've worked together. They knew our routines. They're really good in the off-season, putting in time in the cage on the tee, uh, throwing, um, so they're out doing bullpens on their own out in the little league diamonds and long tossing and using their tees and their barns and garages and so forth. So, um, we've pushed some strength and conditioning stuff out to them, uh, that they can do with just body weight type exercises to keep that strength going that they've uh, worked on all winter long. So hopefully they're taking care of those things. I can't really get them together and I don't want to have them together and have them get sick. So hopefully they're taking care of things on their own for, for the most part. Yeah, no doubt about it. So let's get into your teams now. Let's start. Uh, Eric, your team is another veteran team here in Western New York that have been playing just like Coach Sherman just said, since they were young, in fact, together as one team. What can we expect from that team? And give us some of the names that we should be looking out for this season. Uh, like you said, Tom, it is a, a veteran group. Uh, they've been playing together for quite a while. Uh, this is the group. Uh, we're going to have 10 seniors on this team. So it's, uh, it's even harder for us knowing that we got uh, 10 guys sitting there waiting for this season to start. Uh, uh, at the top of our list, uh, I've got a four-year starter and a senior. He's going to play shortstop and, and probably close out some games for us on the mound in Logan Kleiss. Um, He's he does a little bit of everything for us. Uh, he's very smooth in the middle infield. Um, like I said, he, he at, at the beginning of the season, his, his goal was to close games for us, which is going to be OK with the rest of the pitching staff that we have. Another senior and, and his counterpart at second base is uh, Ben Giardini, uh, probably one of the smoothest infielders I've ever coached. Uh, and last year, Ben hit over 400 in the three and the four holes for us. So. We were expecting big things out of him as well. Uh, we got three guys on the mound that we uh, got a lot of innings. Well, two of them got a lot of innings last year as sophomores. Uh, they were actually uh, our top two guys by the end of the year um, as sophomores. So as juniors, we're expecting big things out of them. Uh, Weston Stevenson, he's been with me since he was a freshman. Uh, Ethan Paul is a junior this year. Uh, he threw the most innings for us last year. He's a big, big, strong kid that we're expecting big things out of, and I think people should watch down the road. That's fantastic. So now I'm going to go over to Coach Sherman. Coach Sherman, we already talked about the makeup of your team, right? You've got a returning Player of the Year candidate in the Colpoise Barrows Cup. He was a finalist last year. you got multiple other kids that have a chance to be finalists for Player of the Year. You talked about some of them already, but why don't you give us a full rundown of what we can expect from your team? Okay. Um, yeah. So even though we only have three seniors, we got eight of our nine uh, positions filled from last year. So you're right. We are a veteran team. We're really strong up the middle. Uh, we've got 
uh, Trevor Luthard, who threw a ton of innings for us last year. He's got a, a great fastball with a lot of movement, and his uh, curveball, when it's working, makes him practically unhittable. Um, he's backed up with uh, Chris Goyette, whose his arm was a little ding last year. We expected to get more work out of him, but he's put a lot of time in in the offseason and the weight room. Uh, he's looking really strong. as His arm is really fresh this year. Uh, he's more of a pitcher's pitcher where he's he's going to throw multiple pitches. He's going to hit his spots. Um, so those two are our strong guys up the middle. Uh, as far as the mound goes, we got Brian Fry at shortstop and A.J. Seafelt in uh, at second base. And I would uh, I would say personally that those that's the best two middle infielder combination going in Western New York. They are both super smooth. Uh, we've had to slide A.J. to shortstop when Brian had to catch a little bit last year, and uh, he's smooth there too. Uh, they both hit a ton. And then out in center field, we got Nate Sherman, who um, also hits extremely well, and he'll track down pretty much everything up the middle for us. Uh, behind the plate, uh, we have a junior, Austin Mosier, uh, who has put on a lot of bulk down below uh, this year. He's squatting a lot of, a lot of pounds, and uh, he is looking super strong this year. We've been waiting for him to grow for about two years now, um, and he's finally sprouting out and growing into his body. Um, we've got a couple other uh, younger pitchers who are both sophomores. Zach Fike uh, is a lefty. He threw some innings for us last year. He, uh, he pitches with the Thunderwolves, the junior Thunderwolves. Um, he's got a ton of movement on his fastball as well, and he's going to see some increase in uh, innings this year. And Xander Payne, who also is a sophomore, he – uh, threw some cleanup innings for us last year, and he's got some pop on his ball this year. He's up into the 80s uh, mm -hmm. with his pitching. Um, we also have a freshman, Aiden Paul, who sees some innings as well. Um, he's a long and lanky kid, and um, he's kind of like a baby, gir baby giraffe right now. He's kind of grown into his body, uh, but he can bring the heat uh, from the mound. Uh, our corner outfielders will be Xander Payne, probably, and uh, Joe Cicchini. Uh, who played some third base for us last year. Um, so we're really replacing just one player, one outfielder from last year, and uh, everybody else on our team, uh, 10 guys worth, saw um, a lot of innings last year. So we're super excited, and hopefully we get to see the fruits of all the work through the years here. Yeah, no doubt. We want to see you guys. Let's also add on, you've got – You've got Fry, who's going to be committed to University of Toledo. You've got right. Herman committed to go to Canisius. You've got Goyette committed to go to Cortland. And yep. I'll tell you, if Luthart wants to go somewhere, he'd be going Division One somewhere as a pitcher himself. Yeah, if he can, if he can uh, get somebody to throw in a fishing rod with his uh, pitching uh, arm, he'll be all set. <laughs> you got it. So, Coach Sanacito, you're led by your catcher, no doubt, who's going to be a Division I player himself and is already committed. You've got a team that is no doubt will compete for a Monsignor Martin crown. Let's talk about Canisius and what they're going to be bringing this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, the catcher, Tyler Coy, um, committed to VCU, 6'4", 240-pound right-handed stick, um, big power, pro power. I mean, legit pop from the right side. Um, strong arm. Um you know, got to work a little bit side to side as far as, you know, defensive ability, but he's pretty, I mean, he's pretty solid and uh, very flexible for a big guy like that. So um, we have seven return or 10 returning players, seven seniors. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we've got guys, uh, Chris Rowan and Dan Toko, who uh, put up huge uh, innings for us last year. Um, they were definitely our horses with us uh, not having Herman. Um, with the injury last year. So that, that definitely hurt us, but it allowed them to get some, some real solid innings. Um, and then uh, Michael Barnes, who, who came up big for us last year with a hold against Joe's, um, giving up one run, I believe in two and a third or something like that, uh, you know, which really uh, flipped our season for us last year. Um, Thomas Riker will give us some innings. Jonathan Welsh will give us some innings. And then uh, Evan Ryman will play some uh, second base, played a phenomenal defensive uh, second base last year. So um, we have the three returning sophomores, um, Christian Cabrera being one, he was a center fielder for us. I think he had 13 or 14 doubles as a sophomore last year. Um, and then uh, Vincent uh, Morrow playing third, um, who really grew as a player, got a lot stronger 
Um, great defensive player, and, and the stick really came along. Big kid, probably, I don't know, six one and a half, six two, maybe 190 pounds. Um, and then Jacob Laduca, who played short for us, um, and he was just solid defensively. Up and down with the bat, but um, put in some good work this, this offseason. So I know uh, offensively he's going to be much, uh, much stronger. But um, we're going to hit. I think we're going to hit. Um, we're going to definitely play some defense. Um, you know, it's going to, for us, it's going to come down to those junior arms that can come and, and step up for us. Um, you know, guys like uh, Matt Bradley and Ryan Lynch, um, you know, guys that, that Mason Stam that, that played on the JV team last year that, that showed some promise. Um, but, you know, now it's go time on the varsity level and, and they've got to step up. Um, we have two sophomores on the team this year and Blaze Colbert and Drew Podless. Um, both different players, Podless, real fast, scatty kid. Um, he'll play some outfield for us, a little bit of second base. And then Blaze Colbert, who can just straight stick it. Um, good lefty stick and uh, probably play some corner outfield, a little bit of first base, maybe some DH as well, maybe some third, depending because Vincent Morrow might uh, give us some innings on the mound. So I'm excited, very excited. Um, again, I don't borrow worry, so I'm just going to act like we're playing and um, but I, I am, I'm ready. If we can, if those junior arms can step up, we're going to be all right. That's fantastic. Great to hear. Those are some great updates. So we talked about too, we've got a big event coming up and chances are the event won't happen, but we're going to theoretically say it's going to happen at this point. And it would be fabulous if it did, because if it did, we've get the chance to have 20 teams play in front of college coaches, which would be incredible because normally we would never get the chance to get college coaches there. Under the current conditions, though, we probably would see a lot of them come to see an event like this. So if I start off, is uh, uh, Coach, Coach Hempel, let's start with you. What would you say is the one matchup you would like to see on that May 2nd day that you would have liked to see outside of if you were playing in that matchup? Well, I think um, down here in the southern tier, we don't get to see a lot of the northern teams play a lot. So... I honestly don't know a ton about many of the teams that are up there. You hear about really good kids and, uh, you know, you network with some of the coaches. Um, so for me, I think probably the Medina game, uh, knowing um, what they did last year as a young team and what they're expected to do this year, uh, not to mention um, it's kind of a personal thing in that the, uh, the Goyette kid, his father and I played together at St. Bonaventure back. 20 some years ago so so to see that and uh to see where we're both at now but uh i think that game would be interesting um and, and just to see how well those kids play together justin what about yourself uh, you know what uh, it's mary's in hamburg right it's yes mary's in hamburg is going to be a great yeah. match. I mean, I, i've known Gary Hill for quite a long time and i've known wags forever um i've known wags for tw since i was 16 years old so um, for me, that would be that would be the game right there, no doubt, just because of of those two coaches, you know, obviously really qualified coaches both know the game very well. So and personally, I, I you know, they're, they're good friends. So yeah. that would be the game. Coach Sherman, how about yourself? Well, I'm, I'm super excited to see all these travel players I've watched grow up the last 10 years or so and see where they're at and what they've become. Um, I think the game I'd want to see from a personal standpoint, from Medina standpoint, is the uh, Southwestern Maryville game because I expect to see some of those uh, teams down the road if we get to sectionals uh, this year at all. Uh, I like to see the Pascarella kid throw. Um, I like to see the Harper kid and how he's uh, developed. I, I know he's a big stick down there now. And um, the older Carson Harper played uh, travel ball with my son as well. So it's good to catch up with people. Uh, the talent there is going to be great uh, from all those teams. So it sh should and could hopefully be a really good day. Could you imagine if we would have seen a Connor Desiderio versus Mitch Pascarella matchup in that one? That would be yeah. a great matchup to see on the mound to see those two teams go at it. So no doubt about it. But listen, that's all the questions I have for today. I can't thank you enough for joining us on the Western New York Athletics Coaches Corner. Give us an insight on the on the kids that are players that are going to be playing this season for each one of your teams. I really hope we get a chance to go out, but if we don't, at least we're giving our chance.
to the coaches to be able to recognize these players that would get a chance to go play out on the field. Yeah, Tom, thanks thanks for doing this and uh, keeping uh, high school baseball in the forefront uh, through this and last year as well. And it's it's really long overdue for somebody to put it under their wing and uh, bring it out for the rest of West New York to, to see and uh, follow along with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Um, guys, if there's anything you need, let me know. But otherwise, have a fantastic day. Let's hope this ends soon. And uh, we'll be talking to you real soon. Okay, take care.